Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah. Brilliant. You fixed so, that wow. in post, right? <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we, okay, we, I am very good at screwing that up. I say the closing statement instead of the intro statement during that song. Yeah, it's terrible. But. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, so uh, there's our intro. It's really catchy. I think it's going to bring home a Grammy this year. Uh, maybe four. I don't know. Maybe four. Um, <laughs> kidding. Is there a Grammy new for intro you? to podcast category? Yeah. <laughs> Implementing this year? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Is that, is that even a thing? No, it, it's it not, not a thing. <laughs> not it should be a thing. <laughs> podcast. I don't, I don't know. The Grammys are kind of. There's a lot of categories. There's so many categories. A lot. I never realized that either until I got older. Like, I'm people don't even know because it's the tip of the iceberg that you're getting when you're seeing the Grammys. It's like right. you have all the rest of the, a lot of instrumental stuff, a lot of like, man, it's just a ton and a ton. That's, that's, that's valid. I am Googling it right now. <laughs> categories, right? That's, that's the word yeah, we're yeah, looking yeah. for? Categories. Okay. So in the Grammys, there's 84 categories. Yeah. Wow. I thought there was more. I'm not going to lie. As a member, I think you can vote on 15, I think. Uh, and then you only have a certain wow. number of votes that you can cast. Um, I think they do that because otherwise people would probably just go through and pick random at yeah. random. So it's really like there's just so much music that you really have to think about. Who do I care about or know? What kind of music do I think about? Or whatever, Yeah. And then make your decision from there. But right. it's a lot. Ooh. Yeah. What yeah. what would be your fifteen categories? Oh God, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I'm usually aware of what's happening in pop and have some kind of opinion about it. R and B, hip hop, uh, maybe maybe some dance stuff. Uh, if I'm feeling saucy, I don't know. Oh yeah, nice. yeah. And then of course there's like the instrumental albums, which actually we were a part of um with black violin we got a, a nomination this year which was really yeah cool, with uh, john Bep up there with john baptiste and christian scott and a and a snarky puppy who i think walked away with it um yeah yeah i don't know that's insane but oh my gosh yeah all right we're gonna get into that in just a minute i totally forgot um as always thank you guys for tuning in and listening <laughs> That was really easy to just dive into that conversation right there. Um, but as always, we're joined here with the one and only Kevin Beggs. Hey. Uh, Jonathan Boucher is actually uh, in Hogwarts right now. He is. He is in Hogwarts. Um, that's what he said anyway, so we're going to go with it. Yeah, we'll, we'll trust um, him. Yeah, so I am Nathan Collins. And then today, we are joined by an incredible human being, the one and only Phil Dude. Bodro. I'm going to try. Bodro? Bodro, yeah, it's it's, it's okay. I had it right. Nice. Yes. It, okay. it looks yeah. more daunting than it is, but it's really just like Beau Dro. The American oh, okay. version of it anyway. I, I've tried to say it the French way and it's just it gets stuck in my throat. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, okay. So there's like crazy accents. Yeah, yeah. Like like it, it's all it's kind of all up here. Like I don't I can't do it. Okay. Like, oh, you speak French because you're you know, Beaudro. No, not a no. <laughs> not a <laughs> That's funny. Jonathan, who's with usually with us, his last name is Boucher. So it's the same sort of thing. Yeah. It's not hard for us to say or anybody to say probably, but people ask him all the time, Are you French? And he's like, Well no. <laughs> but my name might be. Yeah. Like traditionally my name is, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean I guess there's technically French somewhere in the bloodline, right? Yeah. I mean, you would think so. There well, is some sorry, sorry. sorry. I w I don't know if we're talking about Boucher. Or me. <laughs> I'm, talk I'm talking about you. Well, I, I can't speak for Boucher, but as for me, um, yeah, it's like my, like, you know, it's like my dad's dad, whatever. I think there's some French Canadian in there somewhere. Oh, nice. Uh, so, yeah, I've got some people who look like me, I guess, somewhere in Quebec. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. He's got unknown little Phil's running around. <laughs> well, I guess they don't have to be little Phil's. They probably, yeah. 
They might be old. Yeah. Yeah, old films. It's true. true. <laughs> true. That, that was, was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. Is that like your full name, Phyllis? Philip. Oh, oh Philip. Philip. Wait, did you say Philip or Phyllis? Well, I said Phyllis because you know there's probably some females running around there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. All right. But traditionally, yeah. F- Phil or Philip. Nobody calls me Philip, but I'm not opposed to the idea. You know, if that like rolls off the tongue better, you can call me Philip. I'm fine with yeah. that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I mean because I feel like that's also something like aren't you supposed to like change your name at some point? Like when you get older, like your name's supposed to go from like like my name's Kevin, but like where do I go from there? But like like uh Bobby would be like Robert or something, right? Right, you get serious. <laughs> yeah, you get serious stuff. somewhere. Right. It's like I, I guess I'm Grayson. <laughs> yes, you are Grayson. Grayson. That is a very distinguished name, I have to say. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Grayson. But I keep thinking about the lisp now. Yeah. Grayson. Great. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's true. That kind of ruined it. <laughs> well, just say, just go Grayson. Just go all the way. Yeah. Just Grayson. Go Grayson. Grayson the Nate. Yeah. No, okay. yeah, you, this is going off the rails. <laughs> it's it's already, okay. That's where I'll take it, though. Sorry, yeah, you, you no, guys can keep it on track. I might as well just stick to great. Okay. Yeah. Boom. G- that works. Number Single eight. syllable, very easy. We got it. Yeah, that's it. And awesome. we can jump right. on the rails. I feel like we're never on the rails. No. No, that's Let's just see where thing this about... thing can go. Exactly. I was almost gonna swear on the show, but I just okay. remember we're, we're gonna we're keep it clean. Down. I mean, no, it's it happens. It does. I'm gonna have to write down just... some some like good adjectives because I just replaced them <laughs> with the f word so much of the time. You had the uh, it studios would always uh, talk about that with you, wouldn't they? Oh yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm a really interesting human. So like swearing, like cuss words don't bother me one bit. Like. They don't bother me, but I was raised like, you know how we have like personal convictions where we're just like, if I do this, I don't feel that bad. But if I do something that might seem lesser in someone else's eyes, you just feel really bad about it. Um, I, yeah. So like, so like swear words were just always that thing for me. Yeah. And I don't know why it just, I guess it was my parents did a good job at implementing like. They're going to come out of nowhere with a shoe if I said something, you know? <laughs> um, <no. laughs> they're, they live in your superego, and they're ready to strike at any time. Exactly, right? yes. And, um, but, no, dude, I would go into uh, into studios a lot. And, um, you know, like we were talking about earlier, is like recording demos for other artists and uh, uh, just recording for other artists, uh, features or whatever. They would have, like, pre-written... Um, things and um, they had what was it? I feel like I already know where this is going. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was great. So my swear words are things like pudding, um, oh, pudding. or like <laughs> yeah, like I just say things like that all the time. And uh, so this one specific song, um, there was already like there was a specific p word in it, like a lot, a lot, a lot. And, um, I was just like, I told the artist straight up, I was like, now look, before you hire me to do this, I'm just going to let you know, I'm going to replace this word with pudding. And he was like, all right, dude, it's cool. It's cool. I don't know if he was like, not all the way there. Like whenever we were talking about it, but, uh, he was like, yeah, it's a great, um, it acts as a pretty good metaphor, I think. And it's also, it's like cheeky and kind of fun to say. Like, yeah. Why not? I yeah. Get it. I get it. Yeah. You go from like radio hit to Veggie Tales in like zero to 60. <laughs> it's oh, super yeah. easy. But uh, yeah, so I got in the booth and um, I was sitting there talking about like all up in some pudding. And <laughs> See, it, it was, work. it was fantastic. But, um, I don't know what they did with that demo, but I would love to get my hands on it. Yeah, you got to find that thing. Send it to I would, I would love to. <laughs> I want to hear um, it. Yeah. Yeah. I got, <laughs> it, was, it was fun. But uh, yeah, that was... We just got way off the rails again. Okay. I think but, I'm encouraging it. I just keep adding yeah. things. And this, isn't, this isn't a train as much as it's a, a, a spaceship, I think. 
So wherever exactly. it goes, it's all, good. it's all good. Yeah, I guess you got to have something like trains in space. Yeah, train space train. train? Yeah. Space yeah. train. Yeah. Elon, Musk, Elon Musk, write that down. <laughs> yeah, he'll jump on that in a second. He would. Can we get royalties for what he builds? <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that how this works? Or? For each bolt he puts down, we get five cents. <laughs> That then you, yeah, you guys would be we're mega, set. mega billionaires. Exactly. <laughs> MBs. I'm down for it. All right. But what a way to sponsor a podcast. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. No. I'm just kidding. All right. So you're gonna be busy in Final Cut. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's pretty raw show, so. <laughs> oh good. All right. Yeah. So like. Roll. Yeah, I love. I don't know. It, this is our personality, you know, and it makes me feel that... comfortable. To be honest, this is how like I would interact with anybody that I'm hanging with or working with. So it's oh yeah, good for yeah. Me. I hate the idea of like someone listening to something, thinking that I'm something else, and then they meet me in person, and you're like, they're like, dude, you're an idiot. <laughs> like <laughs> this is <laughs> this is not what I was expecting. Well, that's kind of like like Instagram. A lot of times, you're showing everybody like the highlight reel. Yeah, and it's yeah. just a, you know, you're seeing everybody else's false representation. You're putting something out that's not exact. I mean, not everybody does that, but that's generally the way it goes. And then you meet people, and you're like, you're totally not always bad. Usually, in a good way, you're like, you're so different than what you project. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems to be that way anyway. It's like, oh, good. You have like insecurities and shit too. Great. Me too. Yeah. Awesome. That is very valid. Yeah. I, I think that's so important. Um, Cause like around here, we have a pretty good. Uh, so we're in a pretty, fairly small town. Um, and our studio has been open for a little over a year, we're going on like a, a year and two months. And um, yeah, middle of COVID. What a time to launch a business, right? Kidding. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but that's just how the cards lined up. And, um, you know, I just, I can't stand the idea of being on some form of platform and looking perfect. Yeah. Cause yeah, I'm far from it. Honestly, it's it also, it's a lot of upkeep and work that you're doing for free. Nobody's paying yeah. you for that. So, yeah. it's, I mean, I get that it's a way for people to reach out and put their art out. And in that sense, I really like it, but it's far from, that as it's kind of i think main function that right. there seems to be a lot of comparison and that is like the death of productivity when it comes to creativity yes. yeah it's tough so yeah I, I stay off of it generally during the week and then might hop on and see you yeah know, who's who's chatting what, what's going on but that's how like we got introduced as well so see again not all bad but uh yeah definitely gotta that's watch very out. true i still Wait, what? We got unlimited minutes by the host. Yeah. We got upgraded. What the heck? Someone paid their bill. We have uh, <laughs> what the crap. Um that was that was interesting. Um totally took my train of thought. I had a super good question. And thanks to Zoom. It's all good. We were talking about how we met through Instagram. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I still I have no idea how I wound up on your page. It's it's oh yeah, I was going to ask you about that actually. How would you end up finding How would you hear about me? I have I have no idea. Um <laughs> I have <laughs> I have a really good uh I don't know, I have a really good natural tendency to just find new music and um I think I found oh gosh, what song like a 7k oh what song did you do? I remember this stupid good animation that was with it. I'm right this time. Is it I'm right this time? Possibly. Uh, AOE? Was it like, was the animation all kind of, I don't know. It was like green and yellow. Hmm. <laughs> Literally <laughs> sound like a crazy guy. <laughs> oh, 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 Seven Kings. You're talking about the Seven Kings video. Uh, Seven King Kings Dewey. video. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. yes. That's that it. Was, that was, yep. yep. Me okay. My friends. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how I, I came across your, your page. Because um, I don't know if I read the credits or, or what. And uh, so then I went through and like listened to some of your music. 
I guess uh, I guess music from AOE. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh my gosh, this guy is like. The first thing that popped into my mind was diverse. Thank you. Because I could not put a finger on what genre you could like be boxed in, which is amazing. Well, I, it, it's nice to hear that um, in a positive light. A lot of the times it's a marketing concern. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. people don't know what oh, box yeah. to put you in. Uh, but yeah, whatever. It's um, it's it's. You know, I'm I'm surrounded by I'm living out here in L.A., so I'm surrounded by a lot of great, talented people. And it's hard not to just, you know, kind of fall in love with the sounds that you're hearing and get inspired by people. Right. So, yeah, I'm really hungry for that. And um, that might be kind of an innate, you know, people talk about talent or whatever. That's something that I feel like I was born with. It was just like what, curiosity. Yeah. Um, which is uh, I feel very lucky to have, especially finding music because it it's great musical it's you know it celebrates curiosity and it allows you to kind of dig and dig and dig um and you know find like minds to do that with too so yeah, yeah. anyway i really appreciate that thank you yeah yeah that is like um i don't know that's something i've always been drawn to is uh just people and i think this is just something i could tell through your art is people that they don't force their art in one direction. They just let their art flow. And that's, as an artist, I feel like that's one of the most important things you can do um, is not put limitations on your art because your art's an expression of who you are and um, basically your brain. Like, yeah. Like, it, yeah, you're just taking things from here and putting them and translating them into something other people can understand. Yeah, and see what comes out of the speakers, you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it makes sense if you have a massive image to maintain, and it's like your career. Um, but especially for like, and if there's any uh, upcoming artists the listening, um, let your music flow through you. Mm. Um, just like there's, if you have a small following, then they're gonna follow you and just express who you are and do your thing that's the biggest thing yeah let me co-sign that thought as well that's um great advice and it's also a ch you get a chance to connect with people who if you're putting your self out there then the fans even if it is a small fan base they're getting to know a part of your mind in a deep yeah. way in a meaningful yeah. way um to to kind of touch on brand and everything if you have something to you know keep in brand or whatever that's a gig i'd say that's like a job like anything else um de m most of the time uh and i have like instead of being a, a an artist with a singular brand myself like just for me there's a lot of little gigs that i have i do music for ads and sync and you know all these other things that i can use to employ my musical skills Right, but that also frees me up then to do the more creative things and to not have a destination in mind when I'm making stuff, just to see what actually comes out. Because most of the time, I can't, I don't have a clear image of what's actually going on up here or deep inside, and yeah. it surprises me. That's when you can get surprised by the music that you write when you're just like, let it, you know, let's see if it can flow and get to a, a state where you're not distracted by emails and all these other things and get into like a nice four or five hour zone, one of which will be productive and, and see what comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now going branching off of that a little bit. Um, the answer to my question for me personally is yes. Um, do you have any songs that you have written that are just like so expressionable and super personal that will never see the light of day? That's interesting. Um, if it's a completed song, it'll probably reach the light of day. But mm -hmm. like if I've written lyrics and everything, it'll probably get out. Uh, but there are some non-lyric pieces that I really love that I don't really know what to do with. And there's mm -hmm. they're like sketches or whatever. They, they, they are very personal and there's something dreamlike about them that I have no idea what to do with. 
so maybe some of those won't reach the light of day, um, unless I think of a creative way to put them out as yeah, as that makes sense. Wallpaper or something, yeah. Whoa, that's a cool phrase. Sonic wallpaper. Yeah. Whoa. Take it. <laughs> Make t-shirts. That's a, super cool. T-shirts. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, all right. This is totally yeah, the, two things that have nothing to do with what we're talking about. One, I love the lighting behind your guitar. Thank S- you. Guitars plural. Um, the, that's really clever. Um, and two, um. We were just oh I I want to invent something, uh on a scale of one to ten tell me how weird it would be, I want to invent something to where you can produce a song, that every time you play that song, um, certain frequencies will translate differently. Say like, um, there's a snare, but like you listen to the snare, you listen to the song one time through, and the snare sounds normal, but then. If you play the song again, the frequencies like transpose or not not transpose. What is it? Translate into like a different code, where like instead of a snare sound, it's like a uh, a wood block. So mm. you should check out some of the. That reminds me of some of the stuff that Brian Eno has been doing with. Um, yeah. Oh, what is it? Uh, I can't think of the 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 technique that he actually uses but it's um it's like in video games when 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 stuff automatically populates uh like no man's sky for example I'm kind of a gamer so yeah. um uh procedural that's what it is and he, he he works with like procedural synthesis to kind of achieve something like what you're talking about um so basically you'd be creating instead of a mp3 it would be like its own little executable program that when people play it it's it generates randomly the different sounds or something like that. I think it's a cool idea. That's Why awesome. not? You should try to make a whole album of it. That's neat. That'd be awesome. I just don't know. <laughs> find yeah. a programmer. Find a computer programmer who can help you with that. That's a cool yeah. project. I didn't even think about going the whole like computer programming yeah. route. I think okay. that's how it would be possible. Yeah. Now we got to block that whole section of the podcast out. <laughs> cool. It's <laughs> proprietary. <laughs> yeah, just one long beep, just a censored beep for a, a solid two minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So um, let's dive into Phil. Like, as of, like, <laughs> I can't with the jokes. Um, <laughs> who you are. Um, and like how you got to where you are and your love for music. Um, take us all the way back. Uh, where and when, uh, was music introduced as, as a love? Um, hmm. it, it was always around. So before it was something that I was consciously, um, interested in, it was just, part of the house uh, we learned instruments at an early age i started with violin at four uh and then from there I learned piano and trumpet when i got into middle school element like late elementary or whatever middle school piano i think i remember going to my aunt's house and playing two notes at the same time and if i think back it was a c and an e and i was immediately taken by the sound that those two notes played and then i started doing that all the way up the keyboard you know c e yeah. d f you know and i was like oh my yeah. god <laughs> it was <laughs> I, it was a discovery for me and i begged my parents for a piano and it, it didn't happen for a couple of years but eventually we got this super old 1920s like upright giant upright piano yeah. for like a hundred bucks um and it was loud as shit and amazing and um yeah i just kind of played with that for a while so i'd say yeah i guess um i don't know when that was in my life but i guess early early enough that it stuck yeah that's awesome that's that reaction of like your facial expression Mm -hmm. of when you were like i I remember that moment as well like you know know i'm talking about yeah, yeah it's like a sudden realization that like I can do this. Like as a kid, it's so real. 
Yeah, it's it weird that I had the same thought as well. I was like, I remember the two notes they make the good sound. You're like, oh wow, I'm playing something. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's like, I don't know, it's something out of this world. It's magical. All of a sudden, it jumps out, and then everywhere you see. And at the beginning, when I lo- would look at a piano keyboard, I was like, those are too close together for anybody to make anything intelligible. Like, how do you just hit one? You know, I'd mess up and hit yeah. like two, but yeah. Um, yeah you start getting more familiar with it you start seeing the patterns and like that becomes really interesting so yes yeah i still struggle with the whole i play piano really weirdly um just because everything i play is self-taught and um so they make fun of me all the time but i still struggle with the whole hitting one key at a time nothing weird about that yeah piano's hard when you know it is yeah. yeah People it's say it's hard. easy, but it's not that easy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Especially Car if you dive hard. into Yeah. That took me a while to 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 get into to, because of the hand strength that's required for for the different yeah. chords. Like it just is a physical instrument compared to Yes. You know. And then it's a whole nother aspect of things. If you go from the studio aspect of things to like playing for a live show. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. There are no breaks. No, there's you not. You can't be like, okay, hold on one second. Yep. Yeah. No, you just gotta. Yeah, go. you start to feel like your joints like swell up. You're like, yeah. Oh at my the end gosh. of the show, you're like, Ugh, hold away, yeah. hold away. Yes. I <laughs> Let's go grab food, guys. Guys. <laughs> That's right. It's my guitar claw. Can well, you guys hold my drink? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it. it's super tough. Um. Okay. Don't list them off. How many instruments do you play? Just give me a number. Um, you got to count. That's nice. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, I almost have. I would almost have to list them off because I think some of them kind of don't count. So like, I'd say maybe six or seven. Seven maybe. So okay, so I'll, I'll count them off. Anyway, I'm gonna break a rule. Um, we have violin, trumpet, piano, which I would include all the keys in. You know, like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, then we have a bit of piano, um, voice, I would count as an instrument, uh, yes. drums to some degree, um, programming. And that's where it starts getting into like synthesis and stuff like that. I would, I would, and the computer itself, I would consider legitimate. Yes. I definitely count those. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, whatever that makes, whatever that adds up to. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So I play, uh, I play. I say 11. Wow. Like total. And then you play. I don't keep track of it. <laughs> I had to count. <laughs> yeah, okay. Dang. All right. So can you list them just in your head? It's going to ruin the whole. And here's the uh, awkward elevator music. <laughs> You're giving somebody royalties. <laughs> I'm kidding. So twenty twenty five. <laughs> He's like alto uh alto didgeridoo, soprano <laughs> didgeridoo. <laughs> soprano didgeridoo. I don't even know if that's a thing. I thought you were saying like alto sax didgeridoo. Oh no, no. Um okay, so basically what I'm gonna do. Okay. I'll just go with what I have. All right, I'm gonna list off five instruments, and then have you have you ever played um, what one truth, three lies, or two whatever, <laughs> two truths, two truths and a lie, and a lie. Sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. Okay, four truths and one lie. No. Just Let's do three, three truths just, and two lies. Just do. Just do do two and one <laughs> keep it simple that's no fun <laughs> you can do it multiple times oh okay fine we'll do it multiple math times. is a lot easier on that yeah. yeah yeah that's true i failed math five times fun fact we'll keep we'll keep it simple then <laughs> yeah please <laughs> all right so fine uh two truths one lie okay all right so i'm gonna say i play drums violin guitar and I have to find the lie. 
Yeah, I find it a lot. Yeah, it's a hundred percent violin. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that wasn't tough you at all. Find... <laughs> but that's that's because violin is is. Um, I only guess that because those other two, I feel like you can kind of you can you can pick up if you're interested in music and violin's just one of those instruments it's like you don't touch it unless you're serious about it so true i own three violins get out of here <laughs> yeah i just i can't play them <laughs> it's so isn't and violin is the worst sounding instrument when you can't play it either oh yeah even if you put it awful. down for a while it yeah it's like that range of a crying baby it's just yeah yes we toyed around with the idea of like having someone can come and teach lessons and we were like that would be so disruptive. <laughs> yeah. It would be so terrible. Right. Uh, you, gotta, you really do have to learn it when you're a kid and you don't care about, about that stuff. <laughs> that's true. That's true. We just recorded a uh, uh, string quartet String quartet the other day. Oh, nice. That was the most mesmerizing five-hour five hour studio session. I believe ever. it. Cause, like, just hearing them was amazing. It was fantastic thing. You know, when you get some good string players playing and yeah know, the sound just resonates through the wood and they can they are good together in tune and everything which is a huge challenge on any string yes instrument. oh for sure yeah. yeah that's that is a there's nothing like it i love uh, yeah quartets i love string sections yeah mm -hmm. yeah which we'll dive into in a minute um what are your okay so i'm gonna say i play a baritone sax the guitar and the flute. Nice. So which one's a lie? <laughs> oh right. We're doing that. Um <laughs> Oh yeah. I think guitar. No. Didn't I see you play guitar earlier? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's not guitar. So Barrett if yeah. you're a, if you're a didgeridoo player, shoot, you could really go either way on it. So that's what I was thinking, because a lot of times sax players do also play the flute. That's true. I don't know, man. I don't even know. I don't even know what it would say about me if I guessed one of the, over the <laughs> other. This is complicated. Um, I'll guess one. you don't play. You don't play Barry sax. No, I play Barry. I I cannot play the flute. You don't play flute. Uh, okay. <laughs> Man, you got the whole Jethro Tull hair and everything. That would have been it's great. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Good call. Um, so what what's one instrument you wish you could play? Um, it would be nice to play some reed instruments. That's a whole section, mm -hmm. like a family of instruments that I don't really play. Uh, no, I don't play at all. Like I've I've tried to make some sound on it. It's a respect to people who can make good tone out of you know, yeah. sax, clarinet, anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Especially tenor sax. I love tenor sax. Yeah. I don't yes. even think that, like, I can really get good tone out of it, honestly. Like, it's just, it sounds good, but it's not, like, what I would want in my head. I know sense. what you mean. Yeah, it takes a while to get there. Do you, yeah. Kevin, do you play, um, you ever play bass clarinet? I haven't, but I love the sound of bass clarinet. Me too, man. That is, that's one instrument I would love to be able to play. Yes. I like uh, the idea of hearing like a harmony with that and the clarinet and like something else. Oh, it's man. it kills me. I'm like, that's so good. <laughs> it's really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Who Who is it? Brian Blade, the Brian Blade Fellowship. Uh, I forget. It's like an early record, um, that he did, but he he used a lot of, um, bass clarinet, and it would double either piano or the bass itself to do these really yeah. beautiful kind of haunting bass lines. Um, that's awesome. Oh man, that just sticks with me. My, uh, my, so I, I went to Tacoma Falls College here in town. It's a local college we have. Um, one of my professors actually played, uh, bass clarinet. I was in the band there and every time I was like, man, that sounds so good. I almost, was I like, almost, just I killing? almost asked him to like, yeah, <laughs> I almost asked him to come record a track. <laughs> and I was like, you like, should. My you literature should. professor recording a track. <laughs> You totally should, though. I mean, give him a, like an hour of free studio time. You would, you would probably agree to that. I don't know yeah. who he is. I'm just assuming. No, he probably would. Yeah, free studio time is like, you know, it's golden. 
Yeah, yeah. you can yeah. Yeah. entice anybody with that. I know you guys got bills to pay, so <laughs> you know you got to charge. But um, but yeah, Valid. you get people around the studio that people love coming by studios. Absolutely, they do. It's super interesting. They're like always want like a tour or yeah. Or... Show me the gear. Show me the you know it's a yeah. it's a hollowed space for for you know a very mesmerizing art craft. Yeah, Absolutely. that's very true, and if you're like us we're the only studio within we're the only i can't say the only studio because everybody has a studio now but like a studio with like their own building like actual registered llc um we're the only like studio studio within 35 or 40 miles yeah so like wow it's kind of a rare thing and especially being in tacoa like small town it's just kind of like a an anomaly i guess yeah, that's great. It's, it's cool yeah, the market. It's, um, yeah, yeah, it's really amazing. That's really cool. Congratulations, yeah. by the way. I'm I'm sure that's no oh, easy yeah. task. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. We got we got a good team, very good team of people. Great. Yeah, oh. it's, it's so important to have the yes. have the right people around you. Yes, it's very important. So, all right, let's jump into the next. I guess really the next question for you. Um, so we've got like kind of the love of music was there, but really introduced to you at a younger age. Um, uh, how old were you whenever you really started producing and uh, pursuing that career? Um, well, I didn't really have anything to produce with until um, I would write, but yeah, nothing to produce with until my roommate in college uh, showed me pro tools. Like, so I guess I was, I don't know, 21, 20 or something like that. Yeah. 19 or 20. Um, and then, you know, that became really, really interesting, but it took me a while to actually, you know, buy my own version of it or find anything. Cause that was back in, I'm going to, you know, kind of show you my age now, but like that was back in like 2002 or whatever. So I guess there was garage band, but it was super limited and um, right. consumer products weren't just weren't at the, the place that they are now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, around then though, that's when I started getting interested. Nice. Um, not even for production, just to like experiment with. Yeah. yeah. Um, it took a decade to actually get into real production. Yeah. Well, that's, production is one of those things that just it takes so much time yes so much time you ain't lying because you oh my gosh man i (laughs) i found a a cd the other day that literally had um in my eighth grade handwriting it had nathan's (laughs) beats written on it and um i was like all right let's let's listen to where all this started oh man oh my gosh (laughs) So bad. I mean, it was kind ideas, of interesting, though. though, right? Yeah, like yes. To hear those old ideas, like you're like, oh, I hear what I was trying to do. Yeah, and I have three that I have written down that I want to recreate. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Which pretty pretty amazing. But uh, yeah, it's it's just one of those things that takes time. I know Kevin and I, we uh we just recently listened to a few projects that we worked together on a year ago, and um we were both like, oh my gosh. Yeah. We've come so far just in a year. It's like, edifying it is. To, to see the progress. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. So you're uh, in college, um, being introduced to like professional producing. Um, and then how did you get to the front door of Def Jam? How did that happen? Um, I think our. Oh, okay. So our, I think our management company at the time, um, the president of our management company knew Steve Bartles, who was the president at Def Jam, and just, I think, sat down with him and played him our stuff, which was Ether at the time. Uh, uh, that album was like, I don't know, 12, 13 tracks. And Steve loved it. And actually, he offered us a deal there we didn't have to like come in and audition or anything like that or you know blah 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 whatever so it was actually a really cool situation to be in um 
unfortunately what happened after that was that steve left uh, along with uh some of the our other contacts there chris atlas was a, a someone who's who would stand on the tables for us and had a big interest um yeah. uh dylan brewer and a few others and they were really the people who we would engage with there so it was less about def jam at the huge entity and more about those people once yeah. they left nobody really knew who we were uh so it was just logic it kind of moved to the next you know like okay well if we're just going to kind of sit here we would prefer to be independent and, yeah uh, luckily we were able to get out of that deal without too much um you know pain or misery yeah yeah <laughs> apparently is something it's something that happens a lot out here is like people people have a hard time getting out of their deals but that yeah. one was good that that ended up working fine yeah i do yeah um the deal deal side of things can get sticky oh yeah yeah Yeah, it gets really sticky um it's so complicated what yeah what even goes into a song like i'm to this day i'm still learning about the different ways that you can monetize music and you sit there like you know in your 20s or whatever or, or early 30s or however old you are when you're signing a deal and there's this enormous just like a dictionary you're good and there's no yeah. way you can look through it all and, and you need a, a lawyer to kind of help you figure things out but you you need someone who who understands your mind too which of right. course is unless you've been working with a lawyer for years and years there, there's no way that they're going to know right so a lot of the time lawyers will be like well there's a really nice signing bonus five percent of which i'll get and so that becomes kind of an important factor we, we actually ended up having a great lawyer um, his name is Ron Sobel and he has since retired, but he was awesome. like a, just a sweetheart of a man. And so he really helped us work that out so that it was, um, actually pretty easy to get out of at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, those deals are enormously complicated and then you find out how they work when you're in them. You're like, yeah. okay, I want to do this. And they're like, there's really, there's, you can't do that. There's, we haven't allocated enough for the budget for you to do that creatively. We need this over here. And then you're like, but I heard this number and you're like, yeah, but you get to divide that 16 ways or whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. a much smaller number. So yeah, it can be tricky for sure. For, especially for the first time. Yeah, it is. It's very tough. Um, Cause a lot of people just think that you get, you get a lump sum of money to just do music, but then you don't you don't think about like the aspect of you have to market these things um you have to print and publish your cd um like you got to book shows hire a manager photographers videographers copyright expenses are stupid anyway um and so like that's a you know that's really good to hear coming from like someone that's been through it through it um i've been with two labels but not as an artist. I was only a writer and producer. Um, and so like being on that side of things, you're basically, you kind of have creative freedom. It's just, you land what you land right. kind of thing. And which I enjoy that. I do. I do. Um, but I'm happy to hear that side of things from an artist that's been through it. That's cool. For sure. Yeah. The, the, you land what you land thing it's like such a numbers game when it comes down to it. It's just the output has to be pretty, pretty large. But then, then again, sometimes things come back around. you are like, Oh, I wrote this originally for blah, blah, but this seems to be like a good fit. Um, And just takes a long time. It takes a really long time to kind of find the pocket unless you camp up with a specific, you know, group or whatever. Uh, I think of Pooh Bear with Justin they found like a great kinship together, but basically oh my gosh. executive, if he's not executive producing, he's at least like kind of A&Ring almost that those records. Right. Um, along with my friend, Josh Goodwin, who's his engineer and also producer. Um, but uh, yeah, unless you can find somebody that you're just kind of either coming up with or connect with in that sense, then yeah, it's about output, um, which can be, honestly it can be pretty disappointing because you're just used to being looked over and passed on and you know this idea of failure is a constant thing 
Yeah. Um, it's tough. The same is true in the sync world too. I mean, if that's true for the labels, uh, which it is, the same is true for sync. And that's for, yeah. Write these songs that you're hoping that will get placed somewhere, but also are I don't know how many thousand other people, really talented people, who are doing the same thing and have their own kind of angle to it. So it's yeah. a, a very dense, um, you know, market. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's extremely extremely saturated, mm -hmm. and it's um, you know, you were talking about uh, I should, we haven't even talked about um. Dr. Dre, Justin Bieber, um, the Abominable movie. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, Travis Barker. What? What did you do with Travis Barker? Uh, one half of AOE with the band I was in, who was signed to Def Jam. That's just for the folks. Uh, we he knew Travis through something else, through Dre actually, and that's how. What? By the way, Dewan is how I met Dr. Dre as well. But Dre and Travis know each other uh Dewan kind of outsourced his production abilities to work on some stuff with Travis as well and he brought me in on that so we did a couple tracks for um Travis and Yellow Wolf uh and that oh was really gosh. fun yeah like Travis Barker is a really approachable human being and um loves what he does and he has kids and everything and it's just uh I don't know it was a really kind of it was weird because I always knew about him, but being in the same room with him, I was like, oh, that's that's cool. Yeah. It's yeah. totally like like with the IG stuff, it's just different when you're seeing somebody. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you, like you gotta get the the um starstruckness thing out of the room if at all yeah. possible. Just so that you can also because because that's the thing, it's like if you ever walk into a room with someone who's like idolizing you it's it's like okay it's hard to be a natural human being because there's an imbalance here yeah but right. when you walk into a room and you found a way to just be yourself you know like you were saying about songwriting then chances are you're going to connect and have a human interaction with, with the person. right like when creativity can really work that's very true and whenever you get down to like the humanity side of things where like you realize those bigger people are literally just humans they just have really awesome titles but once you get down to it and get to know who they are and why they function the way that they do you get like i don't know it's one it's a very real moment it is a real moment it's a weird moment too I, 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 yeah i don't like the word weird for it i'll be more specific it's just it's out of body right because yeah because yeah. you're competing with this uh, initial image that you had of them and you're trying to deal with that at the same time as seeing their real face overlaid on your like made up image of them and you're like oh my gosh you're different than your marketing the other side of it that's crazy is that they're usually like travis and dre and and, and some of the other people that i've met justin um are really talented people too like yeah. they think a different way, you know, and and they're really engaged and highly focused in what it is they do. I actually met Eminem through Dre, um, and he struck me as somebody who was just laser focused, yeah, but also very courteous. Like he he introduced himself as Marshall, and and I was like, oh cool, you you'll never re remember who I am, <laughs> but <laughs> but it's like nice to have this little like human interaction, like betting with uh, the other producers on like who's gonna you know win the game or whatever um and just to be able to see that side of it was really kind of a privileged position for me yeah um, something i count myself lucky to have been to, to have seen yeah that is amazing that's yeah that's, why. that's wow so you've got a, a lot of experience in um getting over the starstruck feeling yeah it's still something i got to deal with though i met yeah. chris martin once just randomly um oh, man. Coldplay and he was outside of a it was like a what was it it was some I don't know vegan restaurant or something and I was too nervous to say anything it was like one of those moments when I was like why didn't I just like say hi or shake his hand he was like just such a charming sweet human being and I just like got, I kind of like kind of clammed up the same <laughs> thing I would have been the with, same way it's you okay. know <laughs> I, I don't know part of me 
wants to really only engage with people if I'm going to be in a creative situation with them. Because mm-hmm. I, I think that kind of puts me in a different space. Um, if I'm just yeah. on the street, I'm saying hi, I, I've, I feel like it's a, you know, kind of a, a fan moment. And I always feel uncomfortable uh, being kind of being in that situation. Yeah. I'm always impressed when people can just walk up to a celebrity and be like, hey, what's up? Can I get a selfie? I'm like, how do you do that? The yeah. Balls. But yeah, right. it's, it's impressive. Yeah, <laughs> it really yeah. is. Yeah, because it's almost like they don't have a sense of um, starstruckness. Yeah. They're just like, oh, I love you. I'm, I'm your biggest fan. Just like, let's, let's hang out. Yeah. You no. Know? Okay. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> right. Whatever. Oh, you're booked for the next five years. Ah, yeah, me too. It's cool. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'm busy Whatever. too. It's all good. Yeah. 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 Same yeah. level. Same level. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, oh my gosh. I just got, okay. Am I back? Okay. <laughs> I got a phone call, like, wow. Man, do not disturb me. I know. <laughs> I'm surprised it's the only one we've gotten. That's pretty great. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, um, we talked about this earlier, but I'm a, I'm a really big Justin Bieber fan. Um, so, you worked on his ETA. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what did you do on that song? So, let's see. For ETA... Um... It started as a guitar track uh, from a guitarist named Tom Straley, um, who's, again, somebody who I know through Josh Goodwin. That's the engineer um, and producer. And Josh has hooked both of us up, actually, with some work there. Uh, So he's just like, I really, Josh was telling me, I really love this guitar part. There's something really nice to it. I think just some minimal production would sound nice uh, for Justin. And so I just took that and I tried to think about you know okay what's the what's the best way to deal with this and so i chopped up this it was like a five minute recording of this jam and i found the sections that i felt like okay this is good for a verse this might be good for a um a chorus section it mostly repeats so it was just about the feel of it and then okay what do i do underneath you know how do i make it more interesting how do i not take away from what's already working so obviously there's going to be a kick there's got to be some kind of kick to give me the the bottom end um, minimal percussion and then some filtered horns and strings to give it almost like an unrecognizable but very organic quality and then the last touch was just putting my vocal on it for you know some of the higher texture stuff and it worked they really didn't touch it beyond that I mean it was it was kind of awesome that the next I heard I, like I didn't hear his vocal or what it was called until until josh showed me a few days before it dropped i was like oh wow this is great (laughs) love it well that's great wait so their process i mean you obviously knew that they you obviously know they're using your track right not until you you never know until like the track list becomes public which he did he put it out but you know up until then there's probably a hundred songs that are being considered finished high quality yeah. you know songs that are being filtered through maybe less that get to a kind of a certain um you know polish but right. so many songs come through and so that you just i just kind of got some idea through josh like okay he's feeling this you know we'll see we'll see there's a lot of that we'll see stuff that goes on and <laughs> shortly before um the album came out i think he put out those those behind the scenes videos those kind of like episodes yeah uh, yeah and you see him kind of thinking about okay where do i want each of the songs he had those little post-its or whatever yeah uh, and Haley actually really liked that song so i think one of the major reasons why it's on the album is because she liked it so shout out to Haley bieber That's thank true. you good job Haley. good call good call <laughs> Um, yeah i may or may not have watched like every single one of those videos yeah <laughs> no i'm may super may intrigued may yeah may or may not have. um i'm super intrigued by just the creative process um another uh another incredible artist that does that is john bellion um oh my gosh he does do you know who john bellion is 
I've heard the name, but I'm not that familiar. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he does for each album, um, he does like a behind the scenes thing. Mm-hmm. And I guess he hires a film crew to come in and just record sessions. That's great. And it is so amazing to watch um, his creative process because he starts from zero because uh, he does all the productions and the uh, contacting the features and everything himself. Oh, wow. They show all that? Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, like, he'll show, um, like, they'll show him on the phone with uh, one of my favorites is, like, a trumpet player that he just so happens to know. And he's like, yeah, man, can you come down to the studio, lay down a few uh, a few riffs so that I can chop it up in the, in the middies? And um, he was like, yeah, sure. He's like, I'll be there in 15 minutes. So this trumpet player comes over, plays the song. And um, it's like, I mean, it's just so cool to watch the process of how he constructs every it's song. Amazing. Yeah. It One is thing I'm cool. impressed with just it is super based cool. on what you told me is the fact that he can be, and I'm, I'm impressed with, with this quality and a lot of artists that they're open enough when the camera's on to be able to stay in their zone. Um, that's hard. That's hard for me. I, it takes yes. me a minute to, to ignore the, um, the camera, but it is nice yes. when there's a crew there because you can kind of ignore it and they'll take care of it. Yeah. But, you know, for a lot of DIY stuff, it's, it's not the same when you know the camera's rolling. Uh, at, at least, you know, for the first part of it, I kind of get in my head. I become yep. like an observer of myself and then it's hard right. to get into the flow. Yeah. yeah. I have awesome. to remember it. Yeah, I've got to remember that, like, oh, yeah, it'll be edited later, whatever. We'll just yeah. cut out what we don't like. That's so, right. You know, that's the beauty of the uh, what, Hollywood magic. What is it called? Is that what it's called? It's, Hollywood it's, magic? Uh, okay. Well, Hollywood, I mean, you can say that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. That's a nice combination of, of words that I think people recognize. <laughs> Hollywood. I guess so. Yeah, I've I've heard that before. Have yeah. you? Yeah. All I right. mean, you know, studio magic. You get the studio magic yeah. button. You, that's like a little more recognizable. Yeah. The parlance <laughs> of our times, but yeah, no, Hollywood magic, sure. We need a studio magic button. Is that just quanti- quantize? <laughs> Wait. So. No. no the thing, the magic, that. the magic about a studio magic button is that there's actually nothing that it does. What you do is you have a client who really wants to hear the difference. It's a nice big red knob or whatever, and you <laughs> dial it in at like you know three and a half, maybe four. I love you hear it. that? Let me A B it, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I yeah, guess. that really shimmers." You're really <laughs> onto something here, Phil. Like, yeah. Oh, it's not yeah. even my idea. That's that's just that's the magic part of it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my it. gosh. Um, in in my office, uh, we have a success button. That was before Kevin upgraded it. It was a giant red piece of wood. And in Sharpie, I just wrote success button. And uh, every time someone comes into my office, um, eventually they have to leave. So every time they leave, we make them hit the success button. But now uh, Kevin surprised me with a, a button um, that we we recorded. Like, uh, what is it? It's literally just uh, us. Me, Kevin, and Jonathan saying success, like, really aggressively, like, manly, like, success! And then, it's freaking great, yeah. It's, so well, whenever you hit the button, that's what it does. Yeah. Yeah, it's super obnoxious. It's, like, really distorted, and you can barely tell what's being said. <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those Amazon buttons where you record, you turn it upside down, and you record whatever. Oh, you that have. sounds great. I need one of those yeah. for my studio. It's, yeah. it's really awesome. Because no matter what atmosphere you have in the office... Once you hit that button and you hear the overly distorted success button, <laughs> it just makes everything better. It does. I mean, you should put it in the bathroom and hit it every time you flush. Oh my gosh. That's, success! A, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a know. great idea. We're that was a button. Yes. That was a solid <laughs> movement there. We got success. <laughs> was that a bowel joke? It sure was. I know we're keeping it clean, so I just kind of floated above <laughs> yeah, the surface. Exactly. There. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm. I will never be above toilet jokes, ever no. in my life. Ever. No. I don't um, care who I who I meet. <laughs> no. All right. So you're like, 
never growing up, right? In some regards, I okay. think it's okay. almost by choice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. We never grow up either. Mm -hmm. It's it's a good thing. Like life, we're supposed to enjoy it. You know. Right. You we're can't. Supposed to, yeah, you can't only survive it. I, I think right. it's almost missing the point. But um, yeah, and it is nice in some regards to be like, hey, I'm an adult and I have I'm like dealing with my um, the things that I got to do today or whatever. Yeah. Like nailing it. But then in other ways, yeah, I'm still also like eight years old. Some part of me. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Most we're saying this, my legs are on my chair, like doing one of these things. I love that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's amazing. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Um, wow it's been an hour yeah it's been yeah. a great hour dude that, that went by I, I that went by this. super fast okay i have like a couple more questions okay um so abominable mm -hmm. how did you how did you land that that's a great song by the way thank you thank you it's okay. great how did you so, land that so i wrote that with andrew bissell who is from um, and I actually have never heard his last name pronounced, even though we work together like often, maybe once a week or something at least. Um, so I don't know if it's Bissell, like Missile or Bissell, like just Bissell. So I apologize if he hears this and he's like, you son of a... Um, <laughs> anyway, good buddy of mine and we have the same publishing company. It's Pure Music. So we wrote that song together, I don't know, two, two or three years ago at this point. And when that movie was coming out, the uh the sync department at pier played it for them played it for the director and they thought it was like the perfect song to fit that moment yeah so, yeah it it just it was uh my publishing company doing um a good job in in placing that yeah got lucky there oh okay we're caught back up we're caught back okay up. cool did i like <laughs> the, slow uh... down and go <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Are we doing that too? No. Oh, okay. Okay. It's just us. Cool. I just <laughs> noticed the, the pause afterwards. I was like, uh oh, <laughs> something uh -oh. fell out. Yeah. Yeah. I did get the notification that my phone's on battery saver mode. <laughs> we'll get through it. Oh, yeah. I We're totally fine. We're totally fine. Um, So let's jump into. Uh, so obviously, you have some amazing things under your belt. Um. But you as an artist, it like just talking to you, you are like ridiculously down to earth. You have a good understanding of your art, um, and which I admire greatly. Um, it's uh, that's a very important quality to understand how your art flows. Um, what is uh, and this doesn't have to be, uh, which I mentioned this earlier. It doesn't have to be. Um, slash not limited to your quote unquote big projects that you've worked on. Um, but across the board, over everything you've done, what is the most memorable project you've ever done? <clears throat> I remember you mentioning this uh, before the podcast, and I had to think about it. Um, and I still have to think about it. Uh, I think something that keeps coming back to me is just off the top of my head is playing trumpet for love yourself the, the other justin song and i know that's one of the bigger ones but that was a really cool moment and i felt like that was like the seminal you know like that was what? like you're, i'm in hollywood you know I, i'm in um was it uh record plant and you know you can use little scooters to get to the studios and i walk in there and josh is there and when i was listening to the demo of it it was ed sheeran's voice um and he and Ed Sheeran is just an acoustic guitar singing Love Yourself. And then when it came to the solo, he's just da 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 da, right? So I'm like, okay. Josh is like, I think, it, you know, we want you to play that line. I'm like, okay, great. It's in a weird key for trumpet, but it's all good. I got it. I can do this. And I, <laughs> and I sat, you know, and I, I sat in the, 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 the stool surrounded by this really cool kind of ornate, you know, tapestry and felt very regal. And it's a it was a nice vibe. And, we just went through a couple takes, did a couple harmonies, and it was the best half an hour, you know, of my life. <laughs> no, it took you a half the, an hour. It, it, yeah, it only took maybe that. Ma I don't even think it was that long. It was just, it was just, <laughs> I love was, that. What the yeah. crap? 
just being there for like a half hour. Oh, and then afterwards I took some of the, Josh asked if I wanted to do a little bit of like, you know, sauce production yeah, magic yeah, yeah. on it. Uh, so I took probably a reverb or I created a reverb for the horn and then just looped it. It was kind of like a delay loop. If you listen very carefully, this like this little um, oscillating kind of sound underneath the, the horn. Yes. 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 So that little, that little ditty right there. I love that. What the crap. crap. That's amazing. Okay. That's really cool. So Thank you're, you. you're pretty, you're kind of good at trumpet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a little bitter because I had him. Recording. Dude, I'm super bitter. <laughs> I <had him> recording... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We had him recording a part for uh, some project we were doing and he, you hadn't played in a while at this point. So I'll give you, like, I'll give you that. It'd been well, like... I mean, I try to, I try to practice once or twice a month. Cause it's not something that everyone just walks in the studio like, hey, I want trumpet, you know. Right. So I try to practice right. speaking. So I try to practice. Oh, yeah, definitely. exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I just cut you off. You're good. But anyways, <laughs> we were recording him, and uh, <laughs> the part we had was good. But I was like, hey, can you go up an octave? And we'd already been recording by thirty minutes, and he was <laughs> like, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he he did it, and it sounded great. I love Excellent. it. Excellent. And then they just scrapped it. Oh! <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a different song. Oh, never mind. It's a All right. That makes me feel way better. So, he's still sore about that scrapping one, though. So yeah. clearly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. My saxophone playing also got scrapped. So it's okay. All right. It's equal. Yeah. Who brought this horn section? <laughs> yeah. Funny. Oh, that yeah. is so funny. Yeah. I, I know. I know that very thing. Oh, what about if you just bring it up an octave? I'm like. That's like bench pressing twice the weight that I'm putting yeah. right now. But yeah, I'll after give it you've a go. been lifting for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Say that to my pecs. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's, oh, oh man. I'm so happy we can share this frustration. Yeah. It's, it's great. I'm just kidding. It's everything a, comes everything oh. comes together through music, man. Does. Oh, it does. It does. Um, I said frustration like it was a bad thing. I look back on moments like that. In high school, I probably would have been super pissed that that happened. But, like, doing it now, I'm just like, this is great. This is the greatest problem we could have, you know? That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Lucky to have these problems. Most definitely. It's major, major blessing. Um, So, let's talk about... Well, I mean, we're talking about taking it up an octave or lifting another 200 pounds. <laughs> Um, let's talk about boundaries. What, what project, um, you feel like has pushed your boundaries the most? Hmm. Yeah, I think, um, well, working AOE, I think was definitely one of those, if you call it a project or a band, I'm not really sure, but the, the work that I was doing with Dewan, uh, he just opened my eyes, my eyes up to a whole lot of new music. It was a similar experience that I had in, in, in college when I met a whole lot of people who played music and listened to music that I never listened to. Like I, I, um, but I think, yeah, probably the ether was probably the most that I grew in a project uh, to date anyway. Um, and what I'm doing now, I mean, the project that I'm, I'm working on a solo project now, that's maybe 80% done, and that's all by myself. And that experience was also just so different. Uh, yeah, there's, it's, it's, there's something to be said about being able to bounce your ideas off somebody else, um, and see what comes back and kind of get a reaction. Sometimes it's a really tough thing. Sometimes it's really hard, yeah. especially when that person, uh, whoever it might be has a an agenda or like, you know, something else that you're not aware of. You're not sure how that's being reflected back at you. So sometimes collaborations can be, you know, double-edged that way, but yeah. great collaborations are amazing because then you exceed your own expectations and they exceed their own too. If you're both putting something in, it's like yeah. greater than the sum of its parts. So yeah, ether is probably big. And then the, the project that I'm working on now, it's called other nature. Um, that's also pushing me way out of my, my comfort zone. Awesome. That was my next question. Um, what was the name of it again? Other Nature. Other Nature. Okay, and that'll be out this year. Uh, yeah, probably. 
I I mean it's it's just me. I don't have to release it through any label or whatever. So it's really it's it's low key. Um, I think I'll probably make a small like a short run of vinyl or something like that and give it to the people who I haven't been able to see. Um, you know, my friends and my family. Yeah. Like that. And just be like, here, you know, you've been on my heart and mind. And that's really what the project is. It's like, nice. how do I deal with being as isolated as I think that I am? You know, probably yeah. a lot of other people are too. Um, and uh, yeah, connect with them. Really, that was the idea. And then, yeah. so yeah, probably at some point after that, I'll put it out on Spotify and Apple Music and all the streaming media. That's amazing. That's cool. Thanks. So. Is it, you've just been how long have you been working on this this project it's been on and off since uh, i mean there are some songs that predate uh the pandemic but that's when i got into it, it was really like okay this, that kind of stuff yeah. and everybody was you know <clears throat> isolating yeah mm -hmm. um so on the label you had deadlines right um uh... Not even. I don't even think we really had deadlines. Wow. wow. We had a, you know, we had an A and R who was interested in our progress, but we were pretty much self sufficient in that regard. Like we just. Uh, oh, that's cool. To, yeah, they gave us okay. a lot of latitude to be honest to do whatever we wanted. Um, the what? Yeah, and then that's why I I was able to do that the music video. I I ended up animating the music video for for that song. Um, I'm right this time. Uh, which was, I was feeling burnt out on the music side of things. And I was like, are we going to be able to get money for a video? And it seemed like that was going to be a difficult way to go. Um, getting Trying to agree on what the budget would be. And so I just ended up digging into this animation, which took me like a year and a half to do, but, uh, but finished. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I did watch I'm Right this time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What the crap? You made that? Yes, yeah, I animated it. Dude. What okay. What do you not do? <laughs> <laughs> like all the other things, I guess. I, I don't know. You know what I would like to do that I don't do is program, like a computer, to be able to be a computer work yeah. in C plus yeah. plus or whatever. I wish I could do that. I My attention it. span is like that much for it. Yeah. But there are some visual programming languages that are, you know like like unity i don't know if it's a visual programming language i think there's a part of it but you can actually kind of create um it's a big time saver when you're making stories or animations because you can automate it through through code or whatever but yeah you don't have to know c plus plus to do it just yeah. like put these nodes together and well once you once you learn the coding thing dude let's let's uh let's collab on a frequency changing <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I love that. I'm kidding. I I understand the um attention span thing. Yeah, you gotta yeah, you gotta flex other things. Music isn't like the whole thing, right? Yeah. It's a form it's, of yeah. expression, but we're infinitely complex. Our minds, the ways that we express, are are really big. So yeah. sometimes it's easy to get caught up in like I'm a musician, so I got to do music. But there's yeah. probably other things that that appeal, like cooking for some people, or for me, drawing. You know, like just other art forms or other ways that you connect with um, your impulses and desires and all that stuff. That just bring it all in. You know, bring it all into the mix. Yeah, and it's definitely. gonna it's gonna make what you do way more unique. Anyway. So, this is just me being super curious. Um, so you're into drawing, animation, uh, cool stuff like that. Are you um drawing your your cover art for your upcoming album? I drew, yeah. I spent some time drawing my my cover art already. It's really like complicated and layered, and mm -hmm. I don't know if I love it. So I might I might do uh, a new one, but it might show up um somewhere maybe on the inside or something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I do cover art for i actually just worked on um some cover art for a band called eels um who i think a lot of they have a good fan base and uh i think people know them through shrek maybe i think is the movie that they had a song in anyway been working on some art for them and it's like the other you know the other side of what it is that i do um, if I can find the gigs, I'll generally take them. 
yeah. Yeah, to a, sure. to a degree, you know, like it. Yeah, most definitely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> I can, it's so easy to know where you're, you're headed in your head. <laughs> it's awful, man. I immediately went to, um, like, the Titanic. <laughs> that's hilarious it's really bad is like we all feed off of it yeah so on the yeah. podcast we have to really like hold back rein it in <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. exactly i don't know man let him see let him see it <laughs> oh, man. oh we... sometimes it comes out and it's it's yeah. quite an episode <laughs> yeah we do we do have a folder on our computer um called <laughs> Nate's greats. No, great, great, no, great in tapes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, no, it's just called the Lost Tapes, and uh, it's just um, we just have a few forced episodes that should not have happened. <laughs> and I feel it. if we would have released them, um, a either our grandparents or moms would have been super disappointed. <laughs> 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 or oh, no. um we honestly probably would have offended some people like what was the what was the, it was it was my band causing all the problems oh my gosh his band's the worst <laughs> oh no <laughs> awful <laughs> basically my drummer called out eminem like 20 times oh my god that's the whole premise of the episode like okay i i opinions are fine right <laughs> but like he went like overboard like yeah, just, shots fired are a whole different equation that's for sure yeah i think i yeah. think he was doing it because this was around the time uh he dropped the diss track on machine gun kelly oh yeah, yeah. I think he was, <laughs> was like, like trying to go off of that but he did it like constantly they were like oh stop <laughs> yeah he was just trying to get in a song that's good <laughs> he was yeah no i love this flow yeah yeah, exactly. It was fun. Um, all right, so we're gonna wrap this up with our um our final uh segment that I forgot to tell you before uh we started. But oh, I, I forgot about it. <clears throat> oh really? So at the end of every podcast we do this awesome thing. Uh it's just a weekly music section where we go around and we talk about what we've been listening to. Um and why we're listening to it basically mm -hmm. um so let's you want to go first <laughs> I, I forgot about i'll it. go first i'll go first um so this week uh oh gosh man what have i been listening to um i've still been i'm coming off that r&b high yeah um i'm a i'm a r&b fan i just like r&b um i've been listening to a lot of the weekend um yeah. this week uh mainly you're gonna kill me if you say spatial <laughs> one more time i'm gonna hurt you <laughs> but mainly to dissect spatial audio um i just i am genuinely fascinated by how this is playing out so um, it is interesting i mean it's 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 certainly high quality and like he's 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 diving into some interesting territory with the whole kind of like uh serial killer vibe or whatever like yeah i think yeah yeah it's it it, it taps into a, something that i think is um as a country at least it seems like we're interested in especially when you look at what's popular on netflix <laughs> it's like oh, a lot of serial killer stuff going on here yeah. yeah he tapped into that yeah he definitely did um Pro production's great as always you know always yeah, yeah. i i feel like able or I just said Abel like I know him. Like, what's up, Abel? Hey, um, hey, what's up? Have you ever met him? No, I haven't met. No, Abel. I Abel. I do want to meet him one day. Um, I just he has a natural ear for solid instrumentals. Mm. Um, or if he's a part of creating them, I'm not totally sure if he is or not. Um, he just has a natural ear mm. for what's catchy, what's good, and what sticks. Yeah, like yeah, for sure. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like he's got one heck of an ear for that. Um, same with his melodies. He just solid all around. And then his engineers, just how they mix everything. Mm -hmm. um, 
I listen to his music as as mix references from time to time. Yes, yes, yeah, for sure. They're just amazing. Yeah, I, among some other things, but yeah, he's definitely one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, the reverb on his voice is always perfect. It's crispy. Yes, it is perfect. Um, crispy. Was I mean? <laughs> it's a meme. It's okay. The, okay. okay. Uh, I'm familiar. Okay, nice. Yeah. You want to go? Sure. I'm going right. to use uh, my wife's, what my wife's been listening to. Okay. Because I literally cannot remember what I listened to like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> um, so she... You were listening to my album. I was listening to your album. It's that bad? <laughs> Dang. I listened to it a lot whenever I... Unforgettable. Played. Unforgettable. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No. I'm no, kidding. it was really good. Um... Honestly, she's been listening to a lot of uh, a band called Lawrence. Um, yeah, they're they're like a funk. I would call it, I'll put them in funk, almost like Snarky Puppy, but not as like fusiony. Yeah, not as fusiony. Yeah, but um, John Bellion actually produced this new album they did, and I can hear him all over the track. Oh my gosh, it's really cool. Um. <clears throat> Have you ever listened to Lawrence? I, I was gonna no, I haven't. I was gonna ask how you spell that. Um, is it L A U or L A W? L A W. L A W R E N C E. Got it. Yeah, I'll yeah. check them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. If you, I mean, obviously, you have an appreciation for um, like physical instruments. They do a lot of the. They use the full orchestra. Oh, that's not, brilliant. Not full orchestra, no. but like <laughs> um, a lot of woodwinds, yeah. reed instruments, especially. Yeah. Um, trombone, trumpet, yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, it's a brother sister duo, oh, and they just goodness. their voices are phenomenal. Like mm. they they live in that R and B range, but also like I don't know, her runs are unbelievable. Like I don't understand how she does it. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll definitely check it out after yeah. this. I think they're either their dad or their grandpa. Like he owns some company or whatever. That produced like movies and stuff. I can't remember what really? it was. Yeah, that's how they kind of like got their cool. start in doing music and stuff. But that's awesome. I wish awesome. I could remember it. But yeah, I know. I'll take a look. Yeah, definitely. For sure, we got some lineage. Yeah. Well, on how about that, you? Yeah, on that tip, um, you know, I, I'm always listening to what my friends are putting out. Um, I don't know if you know the band Moonchild or uh, they're they're buddies of mine they're kind of an r&b um there's like an erica baduness to it which i of course love moonchild yeah. definitely check them out and also uh the artist Kiefer, who's a piano player um i know who Kiefer is you know Kiefer, okay yeah so yeah he's, he's putting out a, a record right now or it just came out um he's about to go on tour for that but and and of course my my friend Layla Hathaway who's working on her project now as well. So I'm always keeping up with them. But someone who I don't know who I really have been liking recently is this artist named Laura Mavula. I think I don't know if I'm, I'm saying her last name right. It's M V U L A, and she has this um, album called Pink Noise, and it's freaking amazing. Does it sound familiar? I I saw that somewhere. Pink noise. Yeah, it's so good. Like it sounds amazing. You know, if you like the weekend, you'll definitely like this. I think, yeah. in my opinion. Okay. Um, her vocals are powerful. The production is great. The songwriting is great, and the song "Pink Noise" off of that album is really really dope too. Should check it out. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I think. I'm on her website right now, and I just <laughs> took notes of everybody you just said. So great, great. Um, yeah, check them out. I know. I need to dive deeper into uh, Layla Hathaway's stuff. Yeah, um, I dabbled in it like a little bit because um, she's listed on your website um, as uh, one of the ones that you've worked with. Yes. Um, but yeah, I like her sound too. Yeah, and you know her dad is Donny Hathaway, so there's this kind of R and B, you know, lineage. What the crap? Oh, okay. <laughs> this makes sense. Yeah, exactly. But okay. um. You know, I just think in in Layla's own right, she has such an amazing catalog. I mean, she's been doing yeah. this for a long time, and is um, getting into some really interesting stuff right now. So I'm excited for yeah. what she's about to put out. That's really cool. 
Which is um, yeah. Do you have? Are you are you producing that album? I'm uh, working, yeah, with her and a producer named um, Ariza, A R I Z A. Check oh, him yeah. out. Okay, definitely. He he does some really fun things on IG. <laughs> like he he makes these cool little things, but his actual production and songwriting is phenomenal. I can't wait. I feel like in a couple of years he's going to be a big name. That's awesome. That's awesome. That I think I'm gonna go check him out and then. Is he like pretty responsive? Like, you think he'd be down to do a, uh, like a podcast like this? Maybe. Um, I I wonder. I'm not. I'm not really sure what his, what his vibe is with interviews yeah, or yeah. whatever. But, but yeah, give it a go. That'd be super cool. Tell, tell him that we did one. Oh yeah, duh! You just said you're working with him. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Use the whole name drop thing. <laughs> That's it. Works. Hey, people. It drop does. Names. Doesn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me, let me pick that up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. People drop names for a reason. It's all good. Yeah, it's kind of funny because people are like, "Oh, you're just a name." It's like sometimes you got to drop a name. Sometimes yeah, it opens a door. Sometimes it gives somebody a context for like, yeah. "Oh, you do this. This is how you work." I mean, yeah. I don't know. I've never seen anything weird yeah. with that. And validation. Yeah, sure. It feels great to say I'm, yeah. I'm associated with with somebody that you know. You know, it's like a short. That's message. very true. Yeah. yeah, I think that's it for the day. this one. Your phone's <laughs> yeah, my phone, my phone's about to die. So we'll we'll jump off before it does. Really, really yeah. fun. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, yeah. I was, man. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah. we gotta sing out. So you want to sing with us? Yeah, let's do it. All right, you ready? You have any plugs you want to do first before your project? Anything? Nah, no, there's no plugs. <laughs> Diamond Studios, guys, go uh, go book your time now. Party, yeah, and if you're in, you're in LA, right? I'm in LA, yeah. Okay, yeah, if you're in LA, you can, you're more than welcome to fly all the way over here to Georgia. <laughs> Thanks, because there's no studios over there. That's amazing. I know. At I'm gonna, all. I'm gonna outsource this to Georgia. Let's do it. Do it. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right, let's do this. This has been the podcast. This has been the podcast. Yeah!